Well, hello everyone. Hola a todos. My name is Jennifer Angel. I am from Dallas, Texas, which is where my parents arrived in the early 90s from Mexico. And so I am a very proud Mexican-American urban planner here in the United States. And if I were to reflect upon my career to date, which has been a little bit over three years now since I've graduated with my master's degree in city and regional planning, I would describe it as very giving. Just a month of work, I feel like I've aged a lot more than I imagined, um, you know, because as a planner, when you're on the ground working with people, you really get to know their lived experience um, and you're really embedded in that world of giving and being a facilitator and helping people, you know, find resources, find solutions to their issues. So it's been very giving. I, I've really enjoyed the relationships I've built with members of the community. And so connected to that as well is what led to my interest in urban planning as a career. I honestly did not know urban planning was a career for someone up until maybe sophomore, junior year in undergrad. To me, that's very concerning because urban planning is embedded in all of our lives. And so to me, you know, when a mentor of mine was the one who mentioned, oh, well, it sounds like you might want to look into urban planning. And then I, I asked, well, what is urban planning? And the rest is history. But urban planning to me was a way to give back to my community, a way to find justice for my community. It was just for me the like the beacon of, okay, this is what I could do for the rest of my life to help members of my community, but also other members, you know, different communities that might be experiencing the same issues and challenges um, as many have faced, as I've observed growing up. I grew up in Oak Cliff, which is a pretty large area in Dallas, but specifically my neighborhood, um, was you know very low income um which was also reflected in in my household you know we didn't have a car we struggled financially um to have a place to live and so all of the you know things that you need right um and to keep pushing forward in, in society we didn't really have and it was always a constant struggle and so just reflecting on my experience, I know there's people out there, right, that need housing, um, that need access to opportunities. And so my giving is rooted into helping others who, you know, might have the same experience as I did growing up um, or might have something different, right? But it's still a challenge to them to be able to move forward. I had to overcome <laughs> I had to overcome that, um, just working hard uh, and getting scholarships and, and going off to get my education. That was the only way to do it um, we, because we just didn't have the money for it. Um, so th those were some of the biggest sacrifices and challenges, but also too, you know, going to get my master's, I had to wait a little bit more uh, to be able to come back and help my parents because, you know, they sacrificed a lot and they needed my help like immediately but i had to be patient and understanding that no jennifer do two more years and then you'll be able to you know help your parents that was a sacrifice and that was a challenge to overcome while in planning school um and so that also lets me to think about how can we attract members of our community um to be in this career and one thing i've really enjoyed to do ever since i've been back in dallas is participate during career fairs um career days uh, all the way from elementary to you know even high school and recently i always start with asking kids about how many of you know what a planner is and no one raises their hand and that's exactly what I would have also done. I would have been like, what is a planner? And so I enjoy that and I, you know, I'm able to talk about that. And, and hopefully, you know, maybe at the end of that presentation during career um, days, at least, you know, it, it kind of plants the seed. At least they're exposed that it is a career and it is a way to give back to your community. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and it's just 
building awareness in our community about what urban planning is and that we could also play a big role in that as a career. Some projects that I've worked on um, in you know, Hispanic, Latinx communities has been, whew, um, there's several communities here in Dallas that are feeling the pressure of living next to heavy industry. And so helping them navigate that, but also find solutions via neighborhood-led land use plans, helping people know how to participate during public hearings. And now, you know, there's one community who's working on a park um, as an effort to deindustrialize their community. And then there's other neighborhoods too, like Freedman Town here in, in Dallas called the 10th Street Historic District. They're, you know, they're feeling the pressures of, um, you know, gentrification, but displacement and the affordable housing uh, are, um, has stock going down. So I've seen kind of both sides, um, but you know, both of those communities have been hurt. And that's one thing, you know, planning we have to always recognize is what's the role of planning in the injustice we see today. And, you know, a lot of the tools in the planning field was used to cause harm so now let's do the inverse and that's what i'm focused on um in my career we're working with communities um my background my culture my mis raices my roots have really shaped my career and who i am as a professional um i always think about is my community in the room if they're not why not um, I'm always trying to understand, you know, how can we make sure that we're not leaving people out in these important decisions that we see a lot in the planning field. And so, it, again, it builds that in awareness inside of me, but it also always pushes me for inclusion, always pushing for, hey, let's make sure we have this information translated and the languages reflected in these communities that we're serving. So accessibility, transparency, that's something that's important to me because I just think about my immediate family and I want my mom to be able to read a document that's related to her neighborhood, you know? So it, it's, the lived experience has really, um, and just knowing my members of my community, it helps me understand, okay, will they, will they be able to participate in this public forum or not? And then advocating for inclusion. Um, you know, bottom line for planners, to best serve not just Hispanic Latinx communities, but just a community that might be completely different to ours is based on knowing how to meet people where they are and not being afraid to have those difficult conversations. You know, planning should be about authentic connections. Um, at the end of the day, planning it's rooted in the lived experience. So we need to be able to have conversations with people as it relates to their lived experience. And all of that, it's not gonna be pretty, right? It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be very challenging conversations. And so as planners, we need to know how to welcome those difficult conversations. So that way we know how to best serve people. So we actually know how to peel the onion and understand the different layers of challenges to then be able to help them. And, and, you know, like I said, not shy away from conversations on um, racism, you know, it's, it's important to be transparent um, and not surface level. Um, I would say that's not just any Hispanic community, but just all, every single community, you know, we need to be able to know how to connect with folks um, and truly know how to connect with them because, like I said, Planning is rooted in lived in the lived experience, and no, no, no one could teach us right someone's lived experience other than the person themselves. And so we need to be able to know how to connect with people, because uh, I always say planning is people, like it's it's connected. Um, any closing thoughts that you know that come to my mind? Um, is what my mom and my dad would always tell me which is Echale Ganas. Um, in English, the translated version of that, I guess would be keep moving forward. 
right? Have that perseverance inside you, right? Because it is going to be hard um, on so many different levels, whether it's, you know, communities that have a distrust, which rightfully so, you know, um, it's planning hasn't, and planners historically haven't been the best, you know, um, folks for communities. And so it's understanding that legacy that we carry in the in, in, in this profession, not because, you know, we're interested in that agenda, but more of because of we're a reflection of what the career has, you know, this profession has done to these communities. And so it's on us to show them that we're sincere and we're different and we're not going to do, you know, rep those harms again. If anything, we're trying to undo that, what other fellow planners did in the past. And so, you know, it's, it's just not taking it personal. Um, we're just here, my opinion, as facilitators and help people find solutions. Um, but like I said, echándole ganas, keep moving forward because it's going to be, you know, tough. Someone might yell at you, right? Um, especially, I think we probably might have all experienced something like that at this point when you're in a career. But it's just being patient and understanding. Um, and it should just motivate us, you know, like, okay, that act of, you know, of people, of someone yelling at you or whatever frustration, it's because of something, right? So what is that something? And is there a way I could help, you know, find solutions or help them, you know, address and, and fix that issue that they're dealing with as a planner? And so, and then there's other, you know, other things too, where it's just going to be challenging and you're just wondering, oh my goodness, are we going to ever, ever be able to fix X, Y, and Z? Um, so it's just, you know, a channel leg on us moving forward. And that's what just life is overall, right? Um, you're never going to find the right solution. You might think you have a plan of how to reach, right, a goal. And then you might come back and say, you know what? My steps of this plan that I've outlined are just not going to work out. That doesn't mean you need to let go of the goal. It just needs to, you need to go back and think about a different plan approach to find the solution. Um, and lastly, I would just encourage all planners to be authentic, right? Because as we're seeking to connect with people, it's not just people to be honest with us, it works both ways. We both, right, as planners, we need to be authentic and honest with people, even when it's hard, um, because that's the only way we're going to be able to move forward and undo the wrongs of the past. Well, thanks so much. Bye-bye.